The term AI agents are used all the time, but very few times do I see practical uses of it. That's what I want to talk about today. If you've ever ran a business, managed a technical support team, or had to do any kind of customer support, you know how hard it is to keep up when your team is small and your customers are global. You know, sometimes I'm out fishing on a beautiful Sunday when a Slack message pops up. Now, my company uses Slack to provide white glove support to our clients. But guess what? We're based in the United States, and many of our customers are based halfway around the world or on the other side of the world. So while we're sleeping or enjoying a Sunday, some of them may already be working. Most issues are things we've already handled or already answered before. What we're doing is we're regurgitating the same things over and over again. No matter how much documentation we do, there are always going to be questions. Well, today, I want to show you how we solve the exact problem using AI agents. And honestly, it's pretty dang sweet because it takes no code to set up. So let me introduce you to my new best friend, RunBear. Now, RunBear, it's a platform that lets you create AI-powered bots for Discord, Slack, which is what I use, Microsoft Teams, and HubSpot, which is also what I use. And the best part, no code required. RunBear is the sponsor of today's video. But even if they weren't, I'd still be recommending them. Think of it as hiring a virtual assistant that never sleeps, never gets cranky, and knows exactly where to find the answers. Now, I love actually coding and building things. That's where I want to spend my time. But in this case, RunBear makes this incredibly easy to get going. So the setup is insanely simple. It may sound complicated, but honestly, setting it up took me less than five minutes. Let me walk you through that step by step. So the first thing you want to do is sign up. Use my discount code below, and you can get one month for free just to see if it works for you. I highly recommend you try it. Once you're in, you land on a page that looks like this, and you can add your assistant by clicking the add assistant button. Now I already have a bunch set up, but I'm gonna walk you through this setup anyway because it's just so incredibly easy. Now that I've clicked add assistant, I'm basically going to pick what AI I wanna use. In this case, I'm gonna use the recommended open AI one. Once you click that, you can now name your assistant. For example, in this case, I'm just gonna name it support bot because, well, creativity is not my strong suit. The next thing you wanna do is work on your instructions. For mine, I did a very simple instruction here that I just told it it's a, support assistant for my company and to always answer truthfully. And if you don't know the answer, you know, make sure you say that clearly. And I, then I tell it to maintain a professional and friendly tone, but you can play with this a lot. Now, in my case, I'm going to use GPT-4.0. So I selected that model in the dropdown, but they do have other models that you can choose as well. I've uploaded two of my technical documentation. Now, what I'm actually in the middle of doing is hooking it up to Notion, which is just as easy to set up. And I'm setting up a, basically a Notion space where I'm moving all of my documentation from README to Notion so I can keep it up to date in real time. I'd recommend you doing that too. Google Drive's a good one too. You can actually have all your documentation there, but I'm actually gonna be using Notion in my particular case. But for this example, I'm gonna upload two text files just to show you how it looks when I connect it into Slack so you can see how it pulls that information in. Now that I've added my knowledge sources, in this case, I've uploaded the, the two text files. The next thing I want to do is pick the actions that I want available. So I'm connecting this one to Slack, which I'll show you this here in a second. And I'm giving it image interpretation. So you can actually put an image in and have it understand what's in that image. And then I'm also giving it the current date. Now I could add additional actions here too, but I really don't want that all available for my customers at this point. I just think it would be more noise than anything. So I love the customization stuff that I can do here for that. And for the most part, you can kind of ignore the advanced options, but take a look at it. There's some interesting things in there if you really want to fine tune things. So the next tab that you go to is the playground. Check this out. I basically have asked it some information about my documentation I uploaded, and it very nicely replied with what I would expect it to. And these instructions are correct with how, how you actually get to it and enable it. So very valuable for me. The next tab you want to go to is the channels. Here is what it looks like once you've already connected to something. So in my case, I have connected to Slack. And here is what it looks like when you have it. Now, these are the channels that you can connect the bot to. The two I've tested are Slack and Discord. And I'll run you through real quick how to set it up with Slack. It's super fast here. The first thing you want to do is go to integrations. So in integrations, there is a bunch of options. 
for how you connect to your particular Slack group or your Discord. Discord's incredibly simple, Slack's very simple, and it guides you through the entire process. Once you've gone through the steps with your integration, you can go back to that bot you've been working on. Pick Slack again if you've navigated it away, but basically you want to select your Slack configuration. And you're again, you're setting up a token so that it can access the things that it needs to be able to respond in the channels that you want it to. So in this case, you would hit create. And then what that looks like is like this. Now, once you've created it, you can configure it. And if you know anything about Slack, this is very simple. You can basically pick the channels you want it a part of. And you can also say if you want it to be a public or private DM. The one thing I want you to pay very close attention to is smart reply. If you are using this for customer support or you want the AI to reply privately to someone, if it thinks it knows the answer, turn that on. To me, that is what makes this thing so freaking good. Smart reply is just a must turn on for me, especially in the use cases I have. And I'll show you in a second what that exactly looks like in Slack. Now you can ignore basically the other two preferences and activities tab. You can check them out, see if you are interested in it, but really not that important. The next two tabs are more informational. You can see the threads it's engaged in and the activity. So let's jump into a demo to show you what this looks like in practice. This is what smart reply is. I've set up a test channel specifically for this video. And I say, how do I set up AI segmentation? And this shows only to me. So if I'm out on the water, or if I'm in bed sleeping and one of my customers asked a question that I have documentation on, this bot will reply privately to that individual and it even is phrased really nicely. It'll say, while you're waiting for a response, we've prepared a helpful response for your message. It's incredible. You have good documentation. This should answer 80 to 90% of the questions they have. Then, if the customer wants to, they can then say share to thread, and then it becomes visible to everyone, or they can just ignore it and still get the human touch when we reply to them. Smart reply is what makes this great. I don't need my customers to message RunBear directly. RunBear is monitoring, and if it sees something it can be helpful with, it replies. And if I were to actually turn it into the thread, you can see here that it actually shows that I shared that reply. And if you scroll down, you can see here the files that it brought up. It's really, really cool. So you can actually click on it and see the annotations steps on it. I, when I saw this for the first time, I'm like, this is fantastic. This is exactly the solution that I wanted. I cannot wait to have this fully turned on. I only have this in a few channels currently, and I'm still working on getting my documentation moved over, but this is amazing. So now let me show you another use case, which I think is incredibly, incredibly cool. So as a side gig, I actually teach and I have for about a decade now. I'm doing it less and less now, but I still teach about two classes a year, one a semester. And one of the things that always gets me with my students is I have people that wait till the very last minute to start asking me a question. Now I make all my assignments do it like midnight. I'm teaching remotely now. I have actually done in person. And they will ask me questions at like 11.30 p.m. So what if I could take all of my lectures, all of my assignments, and put that into RunBear? And when a student has a question, it could answer them and get them past where they were stuck so they're not waiting on me 10 or 12 hours before I wake up the next day to be able to reply to them. Now that we're in Discord, let me just show you how this works. I've been testing it out in this AI assistant test. And what I'm thinking I'll probably do is have a specific channel per semester that is basically geared towards asking the AI for help. I want it to be very explicit and I want them to have to go into that channel to ask. And then I'm going to set it up where they can actually DM them as well. But in this particular case, I'm just going to show you how it works in here. So I asked it a question and I said, can you tell me how to create my first activity? And what it does is it looks at my documentation and it walks you through the setup of Android Studio, creating a new project, configuring the project, understanding the project structure, designing the UI, running the project. All of this comes from a video lecture that I did. And it's really interesting the way it pulls that directly from the documentation. This is really cool. And I think as a student 
This could be really helpful, especially if I have my rubrics in there pro properly. And a student can be like, hey, can you tell me how my final project is scored? And just to show you one more here, this is one of a lecture I did too, where I teach you how to use the transition manager. And it goes through all of the details on how to set it up. And this is great. It even puts some of the code in there, which is perfectly done. If you made it this far, you may be asking, how much does it cost? Well, if you're a small team like me, you just need the team plan. So $79 a month, basically for a year, an annual subscription is an incredible deal. I can bring my own API keys so I can actually pay for the API usage for Claude or OpenAI myself. And if you do want to try it, when you're checking out, please use the discount code, go through coder. You use my discount code and you pay for a year, you get $99 off your order. If you switch to monthly billing, you get your first month totally free. Highly recommend you trying it. There's really no risk to get that first month free just to see if this works for your business. I've been very impressed. I'm still in the middle of totally setting it up and I'm slowly rolling it out with some of my customers today. So the last thing I'd say is I can't show you everything that RunBear could do. Check out the use cases page. See if any of these resonate with you. Try this out. This is probably one of the easiest no-code AI agents with RAG implementation that I've been able to use so far. One of the things I think a lot about is with AI agents, I don't want to replace humans. What I want to do is make everyone's lives easier and allow people to spend the time on the things they care about. I would rather be writing code and building product than staying up late at night answering support questions. If I can have an agent handle that, I can be more productive. I don't want to lose the human touch, and I still think that's incredibly valuable, but there are use cases like this where basically one or two chat messages have already paid for the cost of run bear for me. And thank you, RunBear, for sponsoring this video. But more than anything, I say thank you for building a great product that allows me to solve a real issue to provide great support for my customers. And for those of you that have made it this far, let me know in the comments below what you think of RunBear. If you get a chance to try it out, leave your comments below. If you've come up with other use cases you think are interesting, I'd love to hear about it as well. Anyway, until next time, everyone. Peace out.